it's like having an assistant, like a person there that is going to talk to you. But this person is not actually out there. It's just the chat GPT. And I see that AI is actually here to make us better, in my opinion. Welcome to another episode of Pro Tips. This exciting new show is your chance to learn practical tips from amazing content creators. This show is born from the realization that content creators like us don't always have a clear path to follow when it comes to content creation. Indeed, we learn by trying things out, by making mistakes, and oftentimes by discussing, by picking the brains of other content creators that might be more experienced than we are. What I'm trying to say is that this is the show I wish I had when I started my journey as a content creator. It's full of practical tips to help you make better content, grow your audience and therefore your influence, but also build a solid business around your content. In this episode, we continue our conversation with Robson Bolivar. Rob is a content creator who talks about Canva just like us. He's also a Canva verified expert, but the only difference is that he creates content in Brazilian Portuguese. In the first part of my interview with Rob, which you can also find on our channel, we talk about growing a YouTube channel, but also seizing new content opportunity when they arise. So that was episode one. Now, in this episode, I would love to know how Rob is actually leveraging these new generative AI tools to grow his business. So let's start with this question. Rob, we'd love to know how you use tools like ChatGPT or Midjourney into your content generation process. Well, at the moment, ChatGPT is a, I say that like it's growing inside of my toolbox, literally, and it's being like the third a tool that I most use, like for Sys Canva and the Notion in ChatGPT. And I think that it helps me to kickstart ideas. One thing that I usually tell to my audience, and I keep saying that, don't only go there and copy everything that is out there and just throw it into something and show it to your audience because like you're not adding your your spices, you're not adding your, you know, your touch. So what I usually do I get it to kickstart. Let's say if I wanted like a description for a video, if I wanted an idea or something or an outline, I get ChatGPT to create something. And based on that, I start brainstorming and taking those ideas and like literally going through them. And this is really helpful. It's it's been super, super helpful. It's like having an assistant, like a person there that is going to talk to you, but this person is not actually out there. It's just the chat GPT, but you go there and ask a question about this or that, and then you start brainstorming, put them all together. I use Canva's whiteboard a lot. So I put all the, the, the stuff in there and I start creating a mind map. And then based on that mind map, I end up with an idea for a video, for example, an idea for content, an idea for course, I create courses as well. So this is all something extremely helpful because before I would use my wife's time. She's not an specialist. <laughs> like <laughs> wife GPT. <laughs> wife GPT. I would sit down and say, listen, I have this idea. What do you think? And she, she was like, she was always extremely helpful, but she's not a specialist. And she didn't know the subject as well. Uh, so chat GPT kind of knows a little bit of everything. And uh, I feel like I'm not taking much of her time as much of, as I usually I used to take. And now I'm using that as an assistant. That's what I usually tell to everybody. That's my biggest advice when it comes to using generative AI. Rob, could you share with us your three best tips to use generative AI to create content faster, better, and in a smarter way? First, is to talk to the AI as if you're talking to a human. That's extremely important because a lot of people, we are so used to go and ask Google for something. And then I'd say like people that have been doing that for so long, you notice that if you ask for keywords in a specific way, you will get the results that you're looking for and you have to go through the links or whatever and get it there. Whereas generative uh, AI, it was created to be like as if you were talking to a human. It's important. That's the first one. And the second is to give context. So let's say if you're going to ask ChatGPT for something, you can actually train ChatGPT before you ask it. We've talked a lot about training ChatGPT on this channel. So if you are interested in learning more about how that works, check out this video. So if you go there and say, um, for example, that you would like to write an email with the same tone 
of the email that you've wrote before or something like that. You can actually copy that email and put it on ChatGPT and say, say you are a copywriter, I would like to write my next email with the same tone. ChatGPT is great at understanding or even describing tone of voice. In this other video of ours, I fed ChatGPT the transcript of a video lecture that I shot for one of our courses and then asked ChatGPT to analyze that piece of content and give me a list of adjectives that would reflect the tone of voice I am using in that specific piece of content. And then, and this is where the magic happens, I ask ChatGPT to generate some new content using the same tone of voice. And again, if this is something you are interested in and want to learn how to do, you can check out this video next. I'll have a link in the description. ChatGPT is gonna give you something, the outcome is gonna be quite similar to what you sent before. So you gave it context. So it's very important for us to write an email or anything, let's say you wanted to create content for your YouTube channel, you can go there and say, say you are a YouTube channel coach or say you are whatever, and I'm creating content for this, this and dash. Could you give me ideas for dash and this? Not only go there and throw, give me ideas for our videos in this or that way, because then it's going to give you more generic ideas. So yeah. if you want something more specific, give it context. And the third tip that I always give to people when they are using generative AI is to get your best prompts and document it. So every time you type something, it is a prompt. So if you type a prompt and you got an outcome that is really nice, keep this prompt. You can even create templates of this prompt. Let's say you go there and ask for any specific subject. You can create a template of this prompt put it in a Notion page or a, a Canva docs or something. And then you can use that, you know, whenever you need in the future. Any top secret prompt you like using? So if you go and ask ChatGPT, I had said that before, but that's in my opinion, one of the best prompts to behave like a designer, to behave like a psychologist, and you can ask questions, to behave like a um, marketing coach. Uh, mm -hmm. or something like that, it is going to behave like that. And then you can get accurate answers. And another thing as well, don't mix your chats. This is something that I have to say. Like every time you open a little chat on the corner there of chat GPT, it's starting a new conversation. Yeah. So if you go there and let's say I'm talking to Ronnie here about AI, and suddenly we start talking about soccer and start talking about Argentina, Brazil, whatever. It makes no sense. Like the answers are not going to be as accurate. So every time that you start a new conversation about a new subject, create a new chat. These are all your chats or conversations in ChatGPT. You can come back to these conversations at any time, even if a month has passed. And ChatGPT should remember the context you have given it in that specific conversation. So that's my main, uh, let's say, secret talk as if you're talking to a specialist and train it, but it's starting from a new chat. How do you see generative AI impacting the future of content creation? Okay, I see generative AI uh, being uh, for us as what the PC was when everything started. People having access to a PC was something, you know, a personal computer or something extremely amazing. You could do things that you wouldn't otherwise be able to do. You wouldn't imagine doing that. But now with AI, it's pretty much the same. And I see that AI is actually here to make us better, in my opinion. Because like, if you are a content creator, you can create faster, and better. You can create better content, faster content, more assertive content. Obviously, like we were talking, you know, if you don't use AI in a correct way, what is going to happen? You're going to have loads of like AI things on the internet and that could happen. But for those who create genuine content, they're actually getting, they're getting an assistant to help them to create this content. So, you know, before it would take me ages to create a copy for, I don't know, some post on Instagram, but now it takes me a few minutes. I just need to literally go there and ask for ideas. And then based on that idea, I will put my, you know, I'm going to vest my, <laughs> my jacket on top of it with my specific language, the way that I talk, and I'm going to put it online. 
And then people are going to have access to better content because this idea is coming out of my mind. I'm just actually asking ChatGPT or the AI to go there and make it better somehow or help me to kickstart it. So I see a content creation for those that are creating genuine content. I think we are gaining like a loss with AI. I love how Rob put it, to put your jacket on top of whatever outcome comes out of ChatGPT. This is something crucial and what will differentiate good content creators from pretty bad content creators. The good ones will learn how to layer their personality on top of the ChatGPT or whatever AI tools output. Because if you don't, your content will just sound, well, like a robot and nobody's gonna care about it. So this is, in my opinion, the most important takeaway of this interview is always, always put your special touch on top of whatever comes out of this AI tool you're using. This will provide you the best results. And that's it for today, guys. As always, I would appreciate some feedback in the comment section. And I'm gonna leave you with part one of my interview with Robson. It's right here.